As part of the recent IMF World Bank Spring Meetings, CCTV America hosted a seminar called Emerging Economies, Views from the East and the South. It brought together leading World Bank economists and top government officials from the Philippines, Malaysia, and Bolivia. The idea was to compare and contrast the regional economies of Latin America and Asia, especially China. Here's some background. As a percentage of the world's economy, Latin America has historically carried more weight than its East Asian nations. But since the early 1990s, China has shifted that trend. It now surpasses Latin America. Wealth on a per capita basis? Well, Latin America started out way above Asia, but Asia has been rising fast with China catching up. But with all that growth comes the issue of income inequality, or economic inequality, measured by the Gini coefficient. Inequality remains high in Latin America, but declining, while in China it is lower, but rising. To kick off the wide-ranging discussion, I started by asking Santiago Levy, the Vice President of the Inter-American Development Bank, what the main challenges are for Latin America and Asia. The world will be different um, as a result of the Great Recession, or whatever you want to call it, the Great Financial Crisis. Um, evidently, the world is going to grow more slowly, and the world is going to face changing conditions in international capital markets. And so the period of very low interest rates that we've seen over the last five years are already changing, and they will continue to change over the next four or five years at what rate is very difficult to tell. So looking backwards helps a lot in terms of understanding what has happened, but the world looking forward will be very different and the challenges will be very different. For Latin America in particular, which is a region that I know best, it is unlikely that Latin America will perform as well in the years ahead as it did in the previous decade, and it will perform less well because it will not have those conditions in the international capital markets, and secondly, because the tailwinds that it was getting from growth in the rest of the world, particularly from China and Asia, helping them through commodity prices is not going to be there. Professor, I want to get to you. I mean, we've talked about a lot of issues already. We've laid the groundwork here, and, and I have to be honest, it's a daunting task. How do you see it, and where do we begin to address the issues? Well, I, I very much agree with uh, what Santiago said a moment ago. Um, we're reminded that um, good times are bad times for economic reform, and it was possible to um, neglect the task when there were tailwinds coming from strong commodity prices and strong global gro growth and low interest rates. I think uh, it's quite right that those days are, are now ending. The problem, Philip, with responding to your question is that um, every, every unhappy country is unhappy in its own way. And it's, it's hard to generalize about what the tasks going forward um, are. When I uh, think about, for example, uh, East Asian success and what the lessons for Latin America might be, I think about uh, education and I think about openness. Um, the East Asian countries that have done well have uh, emphasized one or both of those attributes. Um, there are some Latin American countries, on the other hand, that have done a good job in terms of diversification between commodity exports and manufacturing exports. There is a lesson in that Latin American experience for East Asia also. Minister, Minister Viviana Caro, of Bolivia, on a scale of 1 to 10, how worried are you and your colleagues about potentially higher interest rates? One being, of course, not worried at all, and, and 10, uh, a sheer panic. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I would say a 4 uh, for three reasons. First, as the Philippines, our main contributors to growth in the last years has, has been uh, domestic demand. Second, uh, we do rely, yes, on uh, external financing, and that's something that should affect our mid to long-term development strategies. But our macroeconomy has, very, has been very solid. Uh, we do have uh, ample space in terms of working our indebtedness. 
Therefore, um, on the other hand, uh, we would love to see that moving more our savings side of the equation, something that um, Augusto mentioned, yes? Uh, we would like to see that happening also in Bolivia in terms of um, making our financial system stronger. It was at this point of the discussion that I decided to introduce the elephant in the room, and that is China. And in particular, all the talk about China's economy slowing down, perhaps affecting the rest of the world. I asked Arsenio Balisacan, Secretary of the Social and Economic Planning for the Philippines, how he thought that, that the China slowdown could affect his country. We tend to be less vulnerable uh, we, compared to uh, many of the, uh, our uh, uh, neighbors who are more uh, 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 integrated with, uh, with the Chinese economy. Um, the um, merchandise exports is not a, a very uh, significant uh, source of growth uh, in recent years uh, in the Philippines. Um, uh, it's it has been, uh, that growth has, has come from uh, from domestic uh, consumption, um, um, fueled by uh, remittances, uh, uh, business process outsourcing, uh, which basically uh, Europe, North America, uh, has uh, grown rapidly uh, in, 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 in the Philippines. Uh, it's become a major source of, of foreign exchange. Whether it's geopolitical risks or foreign currency exposure or simply fighting inflation, uh, a lot of leaders turn to the central banks for solutions. I wonder, Governor, is, is it even fair, perhaps are we putting too much pressure on central bankers to solve macroeconomic, modern macroeconomic problems? Let me start with that. Do you think it's fair that we, we put so much pressure on people like yourselves and other central bank leaders? Well, I believe that central banks have a very important role First, uh, to ensure macroeconomic stability, because that's a, an enabling environment for growth. And then secondly, to have a solid uh, financial system that can support that. So in that sense, uh, and then the other aspect that I must add is that central banks also have an important role in uh, promoting financial inclusion, which leads to more balanced growth, which is more sustainable over time. So in that sense, central banks have a, a very key role in all the three areas that I've just described. But I think that you brought out this question that uh, perhaps that it was uh, too much dependent on central banks trying to resolve the crisis. And this is the crisis in the advanced economies. They, there was an over-reliance on central banks to provide a solution when in crisis management, you really need a very comprehensive approach across the board uh, to address a crisis of that nature, even though the crises emanate from the financial sector. Can I ask you a personal question? When, when there's a crisis in Greece or Ukraine or somewhere in the world, do the central bankers, do you call each other up and say, what should I do? do you, when you talk about long-term planning, I would imagine, because you can't have one central bank go in one direction and another go into a different direction. What, what do you talk to each other about when you do see a hot spot? Yes. I have to highlight that in East Asia, we are very cohesive. We talk to each other all the time, and we are highly connected. And just to say as an example uh, to that we now have an in, in place an integrated crisis management system, a framework, where we will all come together to manage any imminent risk to our uh, financial system and uh, to our economy. And we did a simulation recently of how quickly we can come together and speak to each other. We were given two hours for 11 of us to come together, and we took 45 minutes. So, uh, Who's your favorite central banker in Asia? <laughs> They're all my friends. <laughs> If you'd like to see our seminar in its entirety, you can find it on our website. That is cctv-america.com. Click on the Biz Asia America link, and you will see the IMF World Bank tab. You'll also find all the other highlights from the week from our coverage. And again, that's cctv-america.com.
www.thinkdigital.com.